Hey everybody, my name is Tyler Lay. Today, I'm gonna be talk about the behavior of a reinforced concrete beam in flexure or for bending, right? It's pretty awesome. And I think we're gonna have lots of exciting things for you to watch, like beams breaking, like detailed explanations of how everything works. I wanna say a big thanks to one of my, my watchers, Jimmied888. Jimmy says that I bring vivid color to topics that oftentimes appear gray. Ma ha ha ha. Gray. What a great pun, Jimmy. I love you, man. Thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate you. Please, if you watch and you like my videos, please subscribe, give me a thumbs up for a like, and leave me a comment. Let's get started. Three, two, one. In this graph, I'm showing the moment versus the deflection for a beam under a distributed load. Now, everything I'm about to talk about works for pretty much any loading, but let's just focus on something simple, just a beam, simple supported distributed load. In this graph, we can break the behavior up into three zones. Zone A, which happens before cracking. Zone B, which happens after initial cracking, but before yielding. And then there's zone C. And zone C is near the limit state of the structure. Okay? Let's talk about zone A. As we very, very first start to load up the beam, it's got a pretty high stiffness. Stiffness is the slope. And then it goes up and up and up and up and up and up and then it jumps. What? Why would it jump? It's because it cracks. Because it cracks. Because once it cracked, that cross section instantly changes. But before cracking, if we're still in zone A, before cracking, okay, here's our member. It's There's no cracks. It's beautiful. Here's our idealized section, right? Just looks like a beam. Here's the amount of strain. Here's the amount of stress and everything you learned in strength and materials, sigma equals my over i, it works. And it's beautiful. And it's great. But most beams don't live in that zone. If we had to stop at the end of zone A, we, we wouldn't have very efficient sections. In zone B, after the cracking, the beam keeps going, the beam keeps going, and right at the end of zone B, right at this moment, is when something starts to yield. Either the steel starts yielding in tension, or the concrete starts yielding in compression. One of those two can happen to start to cause it to be nonlinear. But before that, before that, if we just talk about in this region in here, the, the beam is cracked. And these cracks go up a good distance. And this cross section is idealized to be at the very center. And those cracks go up and we idealize like there's no concrete on the bottom because air is not very strong. And those cracks are kind of like big gaps of air. So the only thing carrying the load at the bottom below the neutral axis down here is the steel. We actually act like the concrete isn't even there anymore. Now, there's still strain that happens, okay? But we act like the concrete's not even there, and the load looks something like this. And the resultant from that block at the top, right? It's what we call C, goes up here. They have to balance one another, or it would be spinning or moving in space. Now, if we unloaded it in zone B, the cracks would actually close. Now, would they close all the way? They, they, you could still detect them. They're still there but they're very, very small. They're very, very, very small. But after the end of zone B, after the end of zone B, that's not the case anymore. Cracks get pretty large. And most structures live somewhere in zone B. Most of them and their service loads are somewhere in here, okay? Cracked, but not too wide. And if they're unloaded, they, they get kind of smaller. But then once you get to zone C, that's when 
the magic starts happening. That's when the craziness starts happening. You get lots and lots and lots more cracking. Actually, at the end of zone C, you might get something called spalling at the top. That's when you actually start to, the concrete at the top starts to crush or explode. At this point, the beam is cracked. This is what the strain diagram looks like. It's pretty large. And this is what the stress diagram looks like. You've got the steel's probably at yield, okay? And at the top, the concrete looks like this very strange parabola. We're going to idealize it. I'll talk about that in a future video. Thanks to Charles Whitney. God bless Charles Whitney. Came up with something called the Whitney stress block. I'll talk all about it, but we're not there yet. Okay? And we're going to get a, a compression resultant, and that's going to be our tension resultant, and this is going to be the way we do business. Now, before we get into that, let's talk about what can happen in zone C. Once you get up in zone C, once you start to get up in this region, there's one of four things that can happen. One of four type of failure modes that can happen. Failure mode number one is when the concrete crushes maybe as the steel yields. And this is something this is this is something called a balanced reinforcing. Or some people call it compression control. What a horrible name. Balanced reinforcing. Come on, guys. Come on, girls. Get a, what, what a horrible name. Balance sounds good. That's not good. This is not good. You don't want your concrete to crush just as soon as your steel yields. Let's go to case number 2. Your steel yields but you have poor detailing. Poor detailing. Now, we got two situations going on here. First, the steel's yielding. That's good. You say, what? I thought yielding was bad. No, yielding is good. Yielding is very good. Yielding gives you warning. Yielding lets you know something is going on. Yielding lets you call for help. Help me! But if you have poor detailing, poor detailing means how are the bars designed at the end? Are they hooked? Are they straight? How are my stirrups? Are they, are, is there a full hoop going around? Is there not? Is it discontinuous? What's that all about? That is poor detailing. And detailing is really important. Detailing costs you minimal amount during construction and saves people li people's lives and lets your structural take a huge hit and keep on going. Or as I like to say, take a licking and keep on ticking because that's what we want our structures to do. Then we get to three. Get to three. Now we should hope and pray for three. Steel is our is yielding. And we have pretty good detailing. Pretty good detailing. And then, and then there's case number four. That's when your steel is going to yield. I mean, look at this, look at this yield. Look at this area underneath the moment deflection curve. This is asking for help. This is structural resiliency. It gives you the ability to ask for structural resiliency. This is when your steel yields, you're going to have excellent detailing. We'll talk about that coming up. And you're going to have compression steel. So what do you want? You want case three or case four. That's what you want. You don't want two, and you definitely don't want one. And you can control it. You are in charge. You can make it happen. 